Welcome back guys. Now let's continue with the topic of flow volume loops. Flow means how the air is flowing with how much velocity the air is entering into the lungs or exiting out of the lungs and volume how much air is going and how fastly it is going. Okay, Flow means the velocity flow here literally meaning the velocity means how much speed with which it is going and volume means how much air is going. So we are going to compare here two things the flow and the volume during inspiration and expiration okay now let's look at the flow volume loop here is the flow volume loop and whenever you see a graph the first thing that you have to see is what's given on the x-axis and y-axis look on the x-axis what is given the volume changes okay volume how the volume is changing from 0 ml 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 something like that okay the volume is shown on the x-axis now what is shown on the y axis see on the y axis okay on the y axis we are talking about the the flow changes means the velocity changes starting from here 0 liter 1 liter 4 liter 6 8 10 something like that okay here also 2 4 6 8 something like that okay the volume uh, is shown on the x axis and the flow is shown on the y axis means 0 1 2 3 4 something like that okay don't confuse why there are two zeros okay because one is regarding the volume okay one is regarding the volume other is regarding the velocity now here always look on the bottom side we are representing the inspiration we are talking about the inspiration on the above side we are discussing about the expiration okay top we are discussing expiration on the bottom side we are discussing about the inspiration so now let's take a healthy individual and now i am asking this individual to take inspiration first i am asking him to do, take the inspiration now he is starting the inspiration and he is doing it as fast as possible. So look he is starting his inspiration at 1.3 liters. He is not starting at 0. Look he is not starting at 0. He is starting at which liters guys? 1.3 liters. Why? Because you already know there is residual volume. Okay there is residual volume. So residual volume is also present here right? So that's why he is not starting his inspiration from 0 ml. He is starting from 1.3 liters. And from 1.3 liter, see, he is st starting to take the air in. When he, when he is trying to do the inspiration, what will happen to the velocity by which the air is entering into the lungs? See, now I am doing the inspiration. See, when I am doing the inspiration, yes, the volume is increasing, but I am talking about the velocity, how the air is going into the lungs. See, the velocity is gradually increasing, means from 0 liters velocity, okay, velocity gradually increasing to 1 liter. 2 liter, 3 liter, 4 liter, something like that means the flow is increasing, the air entering into the lung with high velocity. Okay. Now you try to do it. Okay. Practically, you try to do it and check. When you are doing the inspiration, initially the air is going into the lung with high velocity. But at the end of the inspiration, concentrate the air that enters into the lung with low velocity. The air is entering into the lung with less velocity. You try to do it practically. See, at the end, the air is not able to enter into the lung. Okay. So, initially, the air is going into the lung with a high velocity. And at the end, the air is entering into the lung with low velocity. So, here I am talking about, see, the velocity is increasing. But at the end of the inspiration, the velocity is gradually decreasing and coming back to zero. Okay. Let me give you an example. See, guys, uh, you have done with your MBBS. Okay. Now, you are doing your internship. Okay. Your MBBS life completed. Now, you are doing your internship. See, when you are going to internship, you are going to go in a nice vehicle, right? You are not going to take some local taxi or you are not going to go in uh, some local transport. So, you are going to have your own uh, nice bike or nice car. So, when you are going to start from your home, tell me, when you are going to start from your home, you are going to start your car. So, initially, do you think the car will go with high velocity? No, your mom is watching you, your father is watching you, okay? So, how you will start? You will start the car and you will slowly start from your home. So, once you take the turn, okay, your street turn, now what you will start to do, you will start to increase the velocity, right? You will start to go fast now, okay? So, in the same way, initially, see, the velocity is increasing. Initially, starting from zero. See, starting from zero velocity, starting from zero velocity, gradually, the velocity increased, 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 okay? But what happened at the end? See, once you are reaching to the 
hospital you tell me what have what will happen once you are reaching to your destination hospital you will start to decrease your speed okay in the same way at the end of the inspiration the velocity decreases and coming back to zero so final thing which i want you to know here is on the bottom side we are discussing about this inspiratory loop here this is the inspiratory loop exactly same what about the expression see you are doing the expression initially you, you can take out the air with high velocity initially see you can take the air out with high velocity but at the end of expiration the velocity gradually comes back and coming to zero again coming to zero again okay so initially you can have high velocity later the velocity decreases and coming back to zero okay i'm talking about the velocity velocity see initially increases and later again coming back to zero again coming back to zero so how the volume is changing and how the flow is changing see inspiration you are starting from 1.3 liters and how much maximum inspiration you have taken the maximum inspiration that you have taken let's say 6 liters you have taken 6 liters of air okay starting from 1.3 uh, total lung capacity 6 liters and how the flow is changing sir initially the flow increases initially the flow increases later the flow decreases okay here initially flow increases later decreases expiration also same thing initially the flow increases later flow decreases so how the volume is changing uh, from 1.3 to 6 6 to 1.3 how the velocity is changing how the flow is changing In initially increasing decreasing increasing decreasing so that's it guys so how question is going to come is image based question okay image based question most of the time they won't ask this normal flow volume loop most of the time they won't ask about this normal flow volume loop then how the question will come they will ask about the diseases how this flow volume loop is going to change in obstructive lung diseases and restrictive lung diseases how it's going to change for that you have to have a basic understanding of obstructive lung disease so in short form we can write it as old okay old obstructive lung disease the classical example of obstructive lung disease is emphysema okay emphysema who will have this emphysema that there are two possibilities um one the emphysema can be seen in smokers okay chronic smokers or emphysema can be seen in people who are having alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency okay alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency okay now what is the main problem here in emphysema already i have explained to you in the basics itself the main problem in emphysema is there is damage to okay or elastin fiber damage elastin protein damage okay so we all know lungs are made up of what elastin so that elastin protein because of the excessive elastase activity there is a damage to this elastin protein gone today now there is no more elastin now tell me whenever there is no more elastin i have told you elastin protein and the collagen they are the responsible for the elastic recoil okay the elastin protein is responsible for what it is responsible for the elastic recoiling of the lung or the collapsing of the lung but right now there is no elastic recoil elastin is gone so elastic recoil property decreases elastic recoil the collapsing nature decreases so now tell me what will happen sir the alveolus your lung have to collapse your lung have to collapse during the expiration during expiration the alveolus has to collapse so that the air will come out alveolus has to collapse so that the air will come out but right now the collapsing the recoil elastic recoil decreases now tell me whenever the elastic recoil decreases do you think the expiration can happen easily no so there will be problem with expiration so always always remember in obstructive lung diseases or in emphysema emphysema which problem expiratory problem e for e in emphysema expiratory problem emphysema expiratory problem so everything e e e guys emphysema elastin gone expiration gone okay next up so what's going to happen now now the air will start to trap inside the lungs because expression problem right the expression is not happening the air is not coming out of the lungs so there is air trapping within the lungs so now tell me because of this air trapping what do you think will happen to the size of the lungs now because of this air trapping what will happen to the size of the lungs now these lungs are going to be voluminous these are big lungs let's say okay big lungs the lung size is going to be very very big big lungs and what do you think will happen to the lung capacities what do you think will happen to the lung capacity it's a big lung so lung volumes lung volume and capacities will be definitely more so lung volumes and capacities increases okay so that's why in your uh, pathology in your second year pathology you have studied okay in emphysema 
the patient is going to have a barrel shaped chest because of this big big size lungs okay the size of the lungs is very big right so the thoracic diameters like the anteroposterior diameters of the thorax is going to be affected because of this large lungs so if you look at the chest of these patients that the patients are going to have a barrel shaped chest okay in emphysema this is going to be barrel barrel shape chest okay barrel shaped chest and whenever you do the physical examination whenever you try to do the percussion whenever you are trying to do the percussion how it's going to be there is a lot of air so when you are tapping on the air it will give you a lot of reson resonance so there's going to be hyper resonance okay there's going to be hyper resonance not dullness more more sound is going to come okay they are just looking like a drums now okay done so with this what we have completed we have uh, completed the basics about the obstructive lung disease uh, obstructive lung disease the classical example is emphysema the problem uh, is with the damage to the elastin protein elastic recoil decreases so there's going to be large voluminous lungs air trapping expiratory problem okay lung volumes and capacities increases now let's see what exactly is the problem with the restrictive lung disease that is rld okay r l d that is restrictive lung disease rld the classical example of rld is pulmonary fibrosis okay pulmonary fibrosis now what is the problem with the pulmonary fibrosis let me tell you it's very simple right pulmonary means lung fibrosis means hardening or stiffening because of excessive collagen deposition let's say today there is excessive collagen that is getting deposited okay in the alveolus there is excessive excessive collagen that is getting deposited excessive collagenization excessive collagen getting deposited now i am asking you whenever there is a lot of collagen there is a, these are fibrotic lungs right now they are stiff for fibrotic lungs first question number 1 if they are stiff for fibrotic lungs are they going to be big in size or small in size they are stiff very stiff hard lungs so these are comparatively small lungs okay try to understand they are small lungs okay small lungs not big lungs definitely and what do you think will happen to the compliance property these are very hard lungs stiff lungs so do you think you can stretch the alveolus easily no you cannot stretch the lung easily so during inspiration what do we want we want to stretch the alveolus during inspiration we have to stretch the alveolus so that air will come in but here in, in this condition you cannot stretch the alveolus so it's a hard lung less compliance the compliance is affected so it's mainly the inspiratory problem so these are non compliant alveoli okay non compliant alveoli and what happened to the alveolar filling in alveoli there is a decrease filling guys okay alveoli are not getting filled because they are stiff okay they are not able to get the enough amount of air so it's mainly the inspiratory problem the problem is with the inspiration it's a inspiratory problem so small lungs stiff lungs less compliance hard lungs so can i say something like this whenever the, the the lungs are very small stiff they cannot expand so what will happen to the lung volumes and capacities definitely less so lung volumes and capacities will be definitely decrease so lung volumes and capacities value will be less now okay with this basic understanding now let's see how the flow volume loop is going to change in this diseases okay guys first look at this diagram okay now this is the image imagine this is the image based question which was asked in your exam first the patient is suffering with which disease okay this patient is suffering with which disease i am asking you how to answer it see in this patient he is beginning his inspiration from where a normal individual have to begin his inspiration from 1.3 liters so that this is a normal residual volume but now right now my patient he is beginning his inspiration from where 2.5 liters which means what happens to his residual volume see there is a lot of residual volume so residual volume increases he is having lot of residual volume okay and see at the end of the inspiration how much air he is taking in see he is taking air a lot he is taking a lot of air a normal individual will take somewhere around 6 liters but now right now our guy is let's say taking 7 liters or 7.5 liters so what happened to his total lung capacity this is the total lung capacity right the total lung capacity in a normal individual is around 6 liters but he is having around 7 liters total lung capacity increases so starting point is always let's say residual volume okay and ending point is always total lung capacity now tell me in this condition the total lung capacity increases residual volume increases okay increases increases so now tell me what is this disease a disease in which the residual volume increasing and as well as the total uh, lung capacity increasing what is this disease this is your obstructive okay lung disease okay obstructive lung disease so now you tell me in obstructive lung diseases 
Have I already taught you? She cannot get the air out. Air is not coming out. Air trapping large lungs, big lungs. Okay, that is the reason why lung volumes and capacities are increasing. I have explained you what is the disease in which the lung volumes and capacities increases. It's emphysema, obstructive lung disease. Okay, so this is how to identify. Now tell me how the graph is shifting. See the graph, it is more shifting towards the, the graph is shifting more towards which side? Left side. See, it's shifting towards the left side. Okay, see residual volume, it's shifting. Total lung capacity also shifting. So, there is going to be a left shift. Okay, in obstructive lung diseases, there is a left shift. Left shift of what? Flow volume loop. There is a left shift of flow volume loop. Okay. Next up. Guys, look at this disease. I am asking you. What is this patient suffering with? Always look at the starting point, inspiratory point. Normal person was supposed to start his inspiration. He is going to start at 1.3 liters. But right now, my patient, he is starting his inspiration, let's say at 0 0.8 liters. Okay, at 0 0.8 liters. What, which means, what happened to the residual volume? Yes, sir, residual volume decreased. And what happened to total lung capacity? Look, the total lung capacity is also decreased. Not 6 liters, it's less than 5 liters, let's say 4.8 liters only. So, total lung capacity also decreases. Total lung capacity decreases and residual volume decreases. So, what is this disease? A disease is where the lung volumes and capacities decreases. That is a restrictive lung disease, guys. So, here answer is restrictive lung disease. Have I already taught you? In restrictive lung diseases, the problem is he cannot get the air in. He cannot breathe normally. The inspiration is going to be less. So, less inspiration, automatically less expression. Okay, small lungs, hard lungs, stiff lungs, le less volumes and capacities. But tell me, where the graph, graph is shifting? See, the residual volume is shifting towards the right side as well as the total lung capacity is also shifting towards the right side from 6 liters now it is shifting towards the more right side so always in restrictive lung diseases there is going to be right shift r for r okay in restrictive lung diseases there is going to be right shift of flow volume loop flow volume loop okay next up sir with just a glance okay i don't want to go into too much details just in exam just within a glance within a second i want to say whether the person is suffering with the obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease see how can you do that Okay, the pattern. Look here. In the expiratory loop, this is the expiratory loop, right? In a person who is suffering with emphysema or obstructive lung disease, there's going to be a scooping pattern or coving pattern. Okay, there's like a scoop, right? You have taken a scoop out of the ice cream. So, whenever you are seeing this bending or curve, uh, coving, okay, bending or scooping, this is definitely an obstructive lung disease. But here in restrictive lung disease, no such curve or bent is going to be seen. Okay, so here there's going to be coving pattern. Coving. Here, there is no coving. Okay, this is the one thing, just with a second you can say whether it is obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease. So, with this finally, what we have uh, completed, we have completed what is the normal flow volume loop and how the flow volume loop is going to be uh, different, how it is going to be affected in obstructive diseases as well as restrictive diseases. Again, I am telling you, this is the key, okay, this table is the key for understanding the pathology. What is the problem with obstructive? Expiratory problem. What is the problem with the restrictive lung disease? Inspiratory problem. Obstructive lung disease? Recoiling problem. In, uh, restrictive lung diseases, it is the inspiratory problem or the compliance problem. In one place, the lungs are not collapsing. In the other place, the lungs are not expanding. The alveoli are not expanding. Okay. So, with this, the topic of low volume loop is completed. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.